The Snapmaker U1 and the Bamboo Lab H2D are two new and very different 3D printers, but which one should you buy? Let's take a look at the print quality, the size, the speed, the price, and my favorite, the poop. When Snapmaker launched their tool changer, I initially compared it to my Bamboo Lab P1P, which was pretty similar in price and size. But you guys called me out on comparing it to an old machine. I had some time with both of these printers, and they represent two totally different approaches to 3D printing. The Snapmaker U1 is a tool changer. That's a printer with four independent tool heads that can print in four colors, or four different materials if you take care while slicing. The Bamboo Lab H2D is a dual nozzle 3D printer. It has one tool head and two nozzles. In its most common configuration, it can handle five colors, one on the left and four on the right, feeding from an AMS. And it can mix two different materials, one for each nozzle. Now, you could put an AMS on either side, but Bamboo doesn't really recommend that. You can also get the H2D as a laser combo and swap out the printing tool head for a laser or a blade cutter. I've tried it out and it is pretty cool. Now, there's some concern that you might muck up the insides with some laser grit, but I haven't had any problems so far. The laser adds a lot to the price tag. So for this comparison, we're gonna stick to the basic H2D with just the default AMS2 Pro. So let's take a look at print quality first. Both machines are awesome here, and they can produce beautiful prints without any bleeding between the colors. But how you slice it is going to matter. The Snapmaker U1 has an edge here because each spool gets its own nozzle. You don't have to worry about colors mixing or accidentally bleeding into each other. The colors are literally kept separate. The Bamboo H2D can only guarantee two perfectly clean colors, one for each nozzle. Now, once you add an AMS and you have more colors, you're gonna need to worry about flush volumes. The default settings on Bamboo Studio are generous to a fault, so you will get amazing results off the get-go, but... Let's talk about printer poop. The Snapmaker U1 has no need to flush out the nozzle during color swaps, so there's no printer poop. It does make this little prime tower, usually just a couple of grams, and this is to make sure the filament is primed and ready for printing. You can turn it off in the slicer, but you're gonna risk little gaps in the print like this. The H2D can only go poop free when you run two colors. Once you add a third or a fourth color, it's gonna have to share a nozzle again and cleaning that nozzle between the color swaps is how we get printer poop. Bamboo Studio is great about picking the best filament arrangements that will save you the most time and the most material on the H2D. You can easily override those settings if you have a spool that you don't want to waste, either because you love it or you're low or it's the most expensive spool you got. I always put the most precious filament on the left where it's guaranteed to get a dedicated nozzle. For example, on these three color dragons, I'm not wasting any of the pink but I am losing about 15 grams of black and nearly three grams of gold, plus an extra 15 or so grams across the board in my prime tower. To understand how awesome the H2D is compared to other AMS systems, let me show you what happens when I switch this file to my H2S, which has the typical one nozzle with an AMS. Now we're wasting about 104 grams of filament which includes 70 grams of my special pink filament that I had saved with the H2D. Next up is speed. So the Snapmaker U1 and the Bamboo Lab H2D are both very fast 3D printers, and the speeds are, well, typical of a modern Core XY. And their default slicer settings are very similar as well, with 200 on the outer wall, 300 on the inner, and so forth. It all evens out. In fact, speed is kind of a bogus metric anyway. The marketing people love to brag on the top speeds and high acceleration rates of their machines. But the truth is, 3D printers never really get to go that fast. The faster you go, the sloppier things get. I mean, I've printed an eight minute Benchy before and it looked more like a shipwreck. The difference between statistical speeds and real speeds is like looking at your car speedometer and thinking that because the dial goes to 160, you can actually drive around town that fast. Even if you don't have any red lights and the cops don't get you, you still have to slow down every time you turn. That's just physics. Now, going back to those dragons, 
when you look at the speed map, you'll see that the H2D averages about 130 millimeters on the body and closer to 200 millimeters a second on the eyes, the spiky bits, and the wings. Now, the Snapmaker, which uses Orca Slicer, has a more even 200 millimeters a second across most of the print. But the final print times are only a minute apart. Using the same print settings, the Bamboo H2D produces this trio in 2 hours and 48 minutes, while the Snapmaker prints them in 2 hours and 49. But when you switch to multicolor, the Bamboo H2D is going to take 5 hours and 7 minutes to print this in 3 colors, which is 1 hour and 40 minutes slower than the Snapmaker Tool Changer, printing the same thing using the same settings. So why is that? Well, it's the color swaps. There are 174 filament changes and only 136 layers in this tiny print. And even though the H2D only needs a few seconds to go from left to right nozzle, it still needs to hit up the AMS 54 times. And that's about a minute and a half each time to spool up a new color. Those little delays really build up. Now, don't get me wrong, the H2D is lightning fast compared to the H2S, which again still runs the traditional single nozzle setup. The H2S takes 7 hours and 22 minutes to run the same file. The Snapmaker U1, being a tool changer, only needs about 10 or 12 seconds to switch and prime the tool heads. It can print this file in 3 hours and 22 minutes, which is only 33 minutes longer than it needed to print it in a single color. When it comes to print volume, the H2D is definitely on top. See, because the two nozzles are on one tool head, they can both print in the middle of the plate, but the left nozzle can't reach the right edge and the right nozzle can't reach the left edge. So it uses the same 340 by 320 build plate as the single nozzle H2S, but you have these left only and right only zones on the sides. That makes your single color build size 325 by 320. The Snapmaker uses one tool head at a time, so nothing is out of reach, but it's a slightly smaller printer with a 270 by 270 by 270 millimeter cubed build volume. Let's talk materials. Both printers can handle high temperature filaments. The H2D comes fully enclosed with a system that can both heat and cool the chamber. This means you can finally keep the door closed on your printer when you're using PLA. The Snapmaker U1 comes with an open top. And I printed ASA in here, and it did just fine. You can add a lid to it for an extra charge. Both come with durable steel nozzles. The H2D has a hardened steel nozzle, which is a bit better for those abrasive filaments. For the U1, there's another extra upgrade that you're going to need to get. If you're into TPU prints, then the U1 is going to be your machine. They can both print TPU, but you can't run it through Bamboo's AMS unless you get a stiffer TPU for AMS that Bamboo makes. The U1 has a cleaner filament path, and it has no problem running TPU, so you can finally do a multicolor TPU print on the Snapmaker. And as long as we're on the topic, both machines do a great job of mixing two different materials, as long as you get your slicer settings tweaked and use the right bed temperature. Each nozzle can be set to a different temperature, so if you want to mix TPU and ASA, you can. If you want to mix PETG and use PLA supports, that works too. And that's a great little hack, by the way. Give it a try sometime. I should probably touch on the ecosystem, which is again kind of a non-issue. See, a lot of companies are building up these fabulous ecosystems for their printers. Custom file libraries, custom filament, custom apps, custom slicers. You don't need any of that. It's just training wheels for the people new to 3D printing. Let me tell you a little secret. Bamboo Lab has an excellent website called Maker World. Lots of free files, lots of cool tools to make your own models, and lots of contests and way to earn points to get free filament. But you don't need a Bamboo printer to use it. Yes, you can send Bamboo-specific files from Maker World just using a phone app straight to your H2D or to any other Bamboo. It's pretty slick. But you can also download the STL file, pop it into Orca Slicer for your U1, your Ender, your Cobra, or even your Prusa. Printers don't care. They all use the same G-code. Likewise, your Bamboo printer can use files from Prusa printables or neutral sites like Thanks. Again, the printer doesn't care. Now, if you're into that sort of thing, they do both have phone apps, but I don't use it myself. 
And they also both have their own filament lines with tags that the printer can read so it can inform the slicer what material has been loaded where. The system is pretty cool, but it's just sprinkles on top of your ice cream sundae. Now the part that everybody is waiting for. Let's talk about pricing. Once upon a time, you could get a printer for dirt cheap. Not necessarily a good printer, but still a printer. Neither of these machines are what I would call budget models, and that's a good thing because they're both really nice. The H2D, however, is more not budget than the U1. The Bamboo Lab H2D combo, which is what you're going to need to get five colors, is currently $22.99. And if you're upgrading from a P1S or an X1C and you happen to have an old AMS laying about, or you just want to run two colors for some insane reason, then the standalone printer is $19.99. I am not even going to talk about lasers. You can go look that stuff up yourself. The Snapmaker U1 is currently on Kickstarter, so if this video is less than a month old, you can get it on sale for $7.99. Now, if you want that lid we were talking about earlier to make it completely sealed up, that's going to be an extra $149 on Kickstarter. It's listed with a retail price of $249. Tax and shipping is not included in either of those prices, so go look it up. The Snapmaker U1 with its current Kickstarter sale is nearly a third of the price of the Bamboo Lab H2D. It's faster and it wastes practically no filament at all. If you're voting with your wallet, the U1's going to win. But wait, the Bamboo Lab H2D is bigger. It's AMS doubles as a filament dryer and it can run five colors. And if you want, you can add more AMS units to it and expand it up to 25 colors, which might be a fun experiment. But personally, I think if you need that many colors, you should just learn how to paint. So should you go with the Snapmaker U1 or the Bamboo Lab H2D? If you want budget-friendly speed and almost zero waste, the U1 is going to be hard to beat. But if you need more print volume, more colors, and you don't mind the extra cost or the extra poop, the H2D could be your machine. If this breakdown helped, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and check the links in the description below to help support this channel. Thanks. I wish I could, I could show you my phone, but my phone, I'm recording with my phone, so <laughs> I can't show you the phone app. <laughs> Phone app.